There we find the man himself. It's Coach Wanstead. Dave, good morning. How are you? I'm doing good, fellas. Always. Absolutely. Uh, and, and you were contacted by Northwestern. You know, we had talked about this idea. I think David asked you on the air last week if you were interested in that. And lo and behold, they must have been listening. Uh, but you were contacted by them Saturday. You talked to them Sunday. And you, uh, you're you staying with us. You're, you've opted not to do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. What happened was they called uh, a representative. And I, I had two long conversations with them on Saturday. Uh trying to really find out what they wanted with this position. Okay. You know, and I just, number one, and then on Sunday to follow up, I did have a, uh, a meeting with uh, the athletic director, uh, Derek Bragg, and we tried to talk through it again. And I just saw this position maybe a little bit different than they did. Number one, with everything that I'm doing here in Chicago, uh, during the football season, you know, with the score and NBC and the Big Ten Network, uh, number one, I wasn't really excited about working, doing it seven days a week. Uh, and then what would my role be? You know, what's the role of this guy? You know, you bring somebody else in that's going to be there every day and going to be in the, once in the press box and involved in the play calling, you're going to lose the play. The players need to be playing for their head coach, in my opinion. The coaches need to know that they are playing or coaching with the head coach as their guy, or everybody's going to sit on their hands and say, okay, you come in and do it. And I was trying to make that point to them that, that there might be another way to do it. And I, you know, it, it was very fluid. That was the word that I heard. I just didn't like the whole spell of it on top of everything else that's going on. So uh, that was the deal. And, uh, you know, now, whether Skip Holtz, you know, Skip's a good coach. Maybe they bring him in. You know, he's with the USFL, so he's looking for a job. Maybe, you know, the, they were very clear to me, obviously, and I was going to help them. I volunteered to say, hey, I would stay on and help if this thing did work out, help you, you know, go through the process for the new coach if you wanted, if you wanted. Uh, but maybe Skip's her guy long term. I don't know. But that was a scenario with me. And, uh, you know, I just feel, again, you know, we're, we're talking about the players. They're the ones that really get stuck in the coaches and their families. So this is uh, – it's only gotten worse in the last week or two. It hasn't gotten any better, I can tell you that. Dave, not surprised they contacted you. We talked about why it made sense. You represent stability, integrity, and some continuity and credibility that they sorely need. My question would be this. When you spoke with Derek Gregg, we have not had – access to what he feels and what they're looking for. You said, what are they looking for in the next coach? Tell us, what did he say to you in terms of articulating what they want? And secondly, I've got to know and I've got to ask, what responsibility did they feel for what's happened in the previous regime? What's happened to Northwestern football? Because I would think that if you're having a conversation about the future, they would have had to have addressed the past. Well, I I did not address the past, and I did not bring it up. That was not part of uh, uh, the conversation that I had. As far as what they're looking for in the future, it was, you know, I heard the word fluid, and I, I uh, you know, if, if you're going to do something, if I'm going to do something, you're going to do it 100%. You're going to be all in. If my name and reputation is going to be part of this thing, and, 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 and it's just, I don't think they're 100% sure what they want uh, out of this position. You know, is the guy going to be overseeing game plans? Is he going to be in the press? I, I definitely was not going to be in the press box. I definitely did not want to have anything to do with calling plays. Uh, this is the head coaches and the assistant coaches' responsibility. And the players need to know that. That was my spin. I don't think they liked what I what I was saying, but that's what I honestly believe has to happen to give these kids any chance to have success. So David Braun is going to be the interim head coach, and they are going to – I mean, I think, that Dave, this is important news because it means they're planning on playing the season. It means they're planning on moving forward with the program. They, they talk to you. If they hire uh, Skip Holtz – then this is a guy that they view as sort of an overseer while allowing the, you know, and again, I think they'll probably play whatever scheme they were, 
they've been working on, right? That's kind of one of the takeaways is that if, if David Braun is still there as the interim head coach, even if you have a football overseer, I don't know that they want anyone calling plays, right? Mike Bagazian will be the the offensive coordinator, Bajakian, and uh, and then you'll run this defense. It means they're playing. That is kind of the big news to me. They're doing something. <laughs> It means they're getting off the bus, Molly. Let's let's really get down to you know the bottom line. They're going to show up, okay? And now, how, <laughs> how, 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 no, seriously, yeah. how it's going to how it's going to? I mean, I heard rumors last week that they were going to bring in another defensive coordinator and let Brom was going to be the head coach type of guy, and then they're bringing in this Skip Holtz or whoever, whoever. Uh, to oversee the overseer, I guess. I don't know. It, it was very fluid to me. You know, I, I'm a little bit anal, but I got to I gotta be exact on everything, and there wasn't a lot of exactness. And, and I respect that because they were trying to do the right thing. They were trying to give these players and coaches some help at the end of the day, and I respect that part of it, and I understood that. And, and I was we were talking back and forth that, it, it, the seven day a week thing and everything, you know, was not was not going to fit what what my mindset is right now as far as me personally and what I'm doing. You're a good man, Dave, but I think that before they are able to move forward and if they do make this move today with Skip Holtz, I would hope that we would hear they they have not said anything about what's gone on under the Pat Fitzgerald regime. They have not said anything about the players who have come forward with these allegations, and I just can't fathom them talking about who they're hiring to coach the team again in their season opener. I'm sorry, who cares what plays they call? I want to know how accountable they feel as an athletic department, as an athletic director, about what's happened to put themselves in the position where they're interviewing ex-head coaches to kind of stabilize and provide some window dressing on a program that stinks. Yeah, I, I don't know. And, you know, the, the other thing, too, was Skip Holt, which was different than the conversations that I had with people, was – that, hey, this is a, a Band-Aid effect until you get your head coach for next year. Well, with Skip Holtz, it's a little different, or anybody that's basically out of work, you know, is, so you're bringing the guy in, is this, is this kind of a uh, trial run or a, a on-the-job interview to be the next head coach, or are they still going to look outside the building for another head coach? So that's a whole other conversation that I'm sure they know what they're going to do, but it'll be interesting uh, as a fan and, you know, to sit back and, uh, and see which way to go. Yeah. It, it's actually fascinating. Skip Holtz, if I'm not mistaken, was, was Lou's offensive coordinator before he became a, a head coach himself. So yes. he's an offensive guy. Now I don't know. And as you said, I believe he was in the USFL, um, he's coached at Connecticut. He's yes. coached at East Carolina, South Florida, Louisiana Tech. Fired him in 2021. He's been a head coach before. He's he was lose offensive coordinator at Notre Dame and South Carolina. But it's been a long time ago. It's it's been a long it's been a while. And he is now the head coach of the Birmingham Stallions in the USFL. It, it's a tough job. It's a tough job to come in here, Dave. And I'm sure that. You know, they you probably got a sense of that because you just you said the, the word fluid was came up often. Yeah, it's, it, how long is Derek Gregg going to be here? Well, that's part that of situation the remain yeah. is what keeps it fluid. So yeah. I understand why there would be a reluctance to work for a guy whose whose own job security would be tenuous at best. Yeah, and just the define thing for me. You know, I mean, just this, the commitment. I mean, I, I've got things going on here uh, work wise that I just didn't want to give up. And my family and my grandkids, God, I was at Loyola's practice yesterday. I got a lot of things to do, guys. I got a lot of things on my plate, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't forget about us, Dave. We need you. Yeah, You're yeah, not allowed I, to leave us. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No way. I have too much, too much fun with you guys. Oh, uh, so much fun. Uh, Dave, I, I wonder, you know, when we think about them just bringing in an overseer and we talk about Skip Holtz and his life situation and where he would go, I would imagine they maybe want some kind of veteran coach long term because, as we've talked about, um, this idea that Fitz was there for 17 years and turned down a lot of jobs. Previously, 
Northwestern is a stepping stone. It's it's a job where you hire a good young coach, and guess what? He's out of there in two or three years, and you're now in the process of continually hiring and moving and coaches moving on. Um, I would wonder if they want someone that would be kind of on the back nine just so they could stabilize that program and not have to replace year in and year out. Um, yes, uh, I, that would be a, a good guess. You know, Skip is, is an example. He's an offensive guy. You know, Fitz was a defensive guy. You know, Skip comes from the Notre Dame, Lou Holtz, you know, a good academic school. I assume that they did their diligence. I'm sure that Skip is clean, you know, as far as NCAA or any of that stuff. I mean, I don't know any of that, but I would assume that they're getting a good, clean guy that's got experience and it's got a good, solid background that it, it might be a good fit for them if, if, if that's what they're looking for. A lot of ifs in this whole scenario. A lot of ifs because you don't even know who's going to be making the next hire. What are they going to be right. doing if the athletic director is still there? Dave, I'm fascinated by how this went down, how they approached you, and how they communicated to you what they were looking well, they're, for. Well, they're using a headhunter, right? They're using they're using um, a, a hiring <clears throat> firm just as they did with, with uh, Derek Craig, right? Yes. I talked to that guy uh, twice, I think, or three times maybe. But yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah. I, I think they wanted to get some help for the players. They wanted to get some support for the coaches, and they're trying to figure out what is the best way to do that. I would have been a a good close to home, knows the program, have worked for the Big Ten. I think all of those things checked, but it was just the uh, the commitment and and you know. And, and, and I, did, just, I just didn't feel it was right for me personally, and I did not want to be there. I mean, let's face it. If I'm on the sidelines or I'm at that game, whose face are they going to be? I mean, you know, I'm going to be all – that's not yeah. me. I don't want yeah. – this is about Northwestern, these players, and these coaches, not whoever they bring in, in my opinion. I tried to make that point with them. Did this, this is not, a, not about the guy you bring in. Give these players and coaches the respect. Uh, that they deserve to play this football season without any more distractions, if that's physics, if that's even possible, which I don't know. Did the size of the cleanup, how big the job is for the next coach, whoever that may be, whether it's Skip Holtz or whoever, Dave, was that something that you considered and got in the way of you saying yes? Uh, no, no, because cleanup was not part of it. It was just, in my opinion, at least in my opinion, it wasn't. Now, Keep in mind, guys, think about what's happened since last Saturday and Sunday. I mean, if you look at your time sheet of everything that's come out with the players and the lawyers and the lawsuits, and it has been every day something, another layer to this thing. And I, so I wasn't even aware of any of this stuff, you know, and that was not even, I was talking football and coaches and players. That was all that was on my mind. Most of this stuff is broken in the last week since I've talked to him, to be honest with you. Right. Yeah. Dave, thank you. And uh, thank you for staying with us, too. Thanks, Dave. All right, All right guys.